G'day, Michael here. This video is about how to save a STL file in an ASCII format as opposed to a binary format. An ASCII format looks like this. One, the first line is kind of a header to describe what's happening. Then it breaks it down into facets. And each facet is only ever a triangle. It's never like a rectangle or a hexagon. Like a square facet ends up being made into two triangles for argument's sake. So you can see here, these are human readable numbers. They might be a bit of a eyeful. A vertex, which is like a point where two lines meet. An X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a Z coordinate. And then another one, and then another one. So that's three points. And those three points in space, however they're placed, define a triangle that defines that facet. And all the 3D models are in those triangular facets. This file here is in a binary format. And as you, as you can see, it's a lot of gobbledygook. Obviously, the program can read it fine, but you and I can't. Uh, my STL to DX, DXF converter uses the text file format, not the binary format. If you're using the STL to DXF program, you'll need to have the text-based format. Okay, so how can I convert from the binary to the ASCII format? An easy way, if you can't set your 3D CAD program anywhere for this purpose, you can install OpenSCAD, being an open source program, into your system for Windows, Mac and Linux and BSD, uh, you know, whatever you feel like, pretty much is available. I'll show you exactly how I achieved that. I'm going to right click that file and copy. Now that will copy the long file name that includes the path, which in this case will be home, Michael, desktop, business, 3D printer, big cricket, yada, yada, yada. Right, so it'll be the long name. If you were opening and saving a OpenSCAD file using OpenSCAD from this folder, you only have to give it the file name because it'll know that it's in the same folder that the OpenSCAD file is. But I'm assuming that's not how you're going to run it. Um, so we'll use the long file name. So let's go back to OpenSCAD. So to import, we simply type the word import. That was difficult. You got to open parentheses. Now it just says file, but we've got to put that in quotes. So we open a quote, right click, paste, and you can see that's the long file name that I had. Close quotes, that's the double fangs, right? Uh, so in, other words, uh, in a typical US keyboard, it's like shift, uh, apostrophe, which is right next to the enter key. Close parentheses, semicolon, that closes off that line. So you can see here, as I move on to the parenthesis here, the other one is highlighted. So it proves that it's a balanced set, open and close parentheses. So let's see what that does. By pressing F5, we get a quick render. I've got this feature here enabled, which shows the edges. And you can see this rectangular portion here has actually been broken into three, uh, two triangles. So three sides, everything's got three sides, or three points, three vertices, whichever way you look at it. So there's no such thing as a shape here that is not a triangle. Everything is a triangle with the three X, Y, Z coordinates. F6 doesn't give us these points, but it does higher precision render. It makes more sense if you're doing other jobs. This is just importing, so it may seem a bit redundant to you, but just roll with it. Okay, so I've pressed F6 and export it, we can click on save, uh, export as STL, or we can just press F7. So I'm gonna call it nut.stl, which is what I've already saved it as once before, so just as a practice. So I'll save it as nut.stl. So here's the other one that I did earlier, so I'll overwrite it, yes. So let's go to our documents folder. And if I open that with a text editor, you can see here it is here in that format. Right, so just, I mean these numbers are hard to understand so I'll, I'll give you an example going back to OpenSCAD of how nicely we can do this. I'm going to go home, two forward slashes makes it a comment, you can see how it's turned cyan. If I just go cube 100, close semicolon, F5, whoops, you can see, zoom to fit. You can see that's what we have. F6 actually properly does it. F7 to save it. I'm going to call it cube. Right, so let's have a look what the cube looks like. Right click, open text editor. And you can see actually, I'll just zoom in. We've got a vertex 0, 100, 100. So I might just uh, 
Make that following me around like you do. Let's go there. Okay, so put this over here. Zero comma one hundred. Whoopsie. Zero comma one hundred comma one hundred. So zero in the x-axis comma one hundred comma one hundred. So there. So that's the first point. It's donated. I uh, denoted. <laughs> donated. First point den denoted is zero comma one hundred comma one hundred. So that's that point there. The next line. 100, 0, 100, so it's there. And 100 across, 100 back, 100 up, so it's there. So that point, that point, and that point make a triangle that is that half that top surface. Those three points. Okay, so that's what that area there is defining. And you can see in plain English, I know it's a bit complicated, but in plain English, it's those three points. So that first um, facet is in fact half of the top surface of the cube. And because it's in plain English, we can read it. Um, yeah, versus a binary thing, got no idea. Okay, so going back to our cube, so that's that's what we've just created. Well, I guess that's it. I hope that's uh, informative to you. I hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.